welcome back. So first of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys for um, subscribing and for the response to starting the second channel has been awesome. Y'all have been amazing and we're one week in and I am loving it and I'm so happy that I did this, like so happy. Okay, so in my last video, when I shared with you guys the curriculum that we have chosen to use this year, one of the big questions I got a lot down in the comments was I mentioned us doing a looping basket and I got a lot of questions about what is a looping basket? So I just thought I would sort of explain what one is, how we're using ours, that sort of thing. Okay, so first let me say, I did not come up with this idea. This is not my idea. Well, almost 100% positive this um, is the brainchild of the own, one and only genius Pam Barnhill. Um, I will leave her link down below. Um, that's where some of these printables and stuff that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys for how I scheduled it and everything, those all came from her site. She is a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of knowledge but I'm gonna give you sort of the Cliff's Notes um, of what one is and why we do it. The idea for a looping basket is for subjects that you don't want to do, they're not your daily subjects. So you wouldn't use a looping basket for math um, or daily subjects. A looping basket is for subjects where, for example, let's say you wanted to do like history, science, and geography. Um, but you didn't want to do them every single day. Well, if you tried to schedule it like on Mondays and Wednesdays, we do history. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do science. And on Fridays, we do geography. That's all great and fine, but then what ends up happening is that you miss one of those days of school as a homeschooling family. We all know that there's lots of times that um, life gets in the way and we have to push school for the day. Um, it's not a bad thing, that's one of the beauties of homeschooling, but it can put you really far behind if you, um, you know, just end up having like a series of weeks where somebody is sick and, or you know, gotta go pick up dad from the airport or whatever it is you've gotta do. Someone's coming into town and next thing you know, you've missed certain subjects multiple times and it's really hard to catch up and then it's just kind of puts you in a weird place. And I really wish I would have known about this a lot sooner. Um, it would have made, prior to using the good and the beautiful where they have their language arts sort of, it's almost like their subjects are on a loop where you do different things within that curriculum. Basically what you do is you take those subjects and instead of saying you're gonna do them on X day, X day, you just put them on a loop by the order in which you wanna do them and then how many times you wanna do each of them before you do the next one. So what that does is it just sort of creates a routine instead of a schedule. So let me give you an example. Like let's just say, like I said, you were doing um, science, history, and geography. So what you might say is I wanna do science twice, I wanna do um, history twice, and geography once. Um, it is more of like a ratio. I'm so sorry, my kids are so loud. I actually legit have a kid, a kid asleep on the couch over there, but you can guess which one of my kids is sound asleep on the couch over there. But apparently they're just gonna be sleeping through this. So um, so then you decide on a ratio that you, that's basically what you're deciding on is the ratio of how many times you wanna do this compared to this, if that makes sense. So what you would do is you would say, okay, we're gonna do science, history, science, history, geography. So that would give you twice of doing the two subjects you wanted to do twice and then the once of geography. So what happens is when you go to start your loop that day, you just pick up on whichever one is next in line. I'm hoping that this is making sense. I'm certain that other people on the interwebs have explained it much better than I have, but it allows you to not feel like you're ever behind or missing things because if you have to miss a day of school, then the next time you just pick up on the subject that you need to pick up on. It's not like, oh crap, it's Thursday. It's supposed to be history day, but we missed school yesterday, so we didn't do science, so should we do science today? And you understand what I'm saying? Okay, that's what a looping basket is. So the subjects that I have in it, and I have, because this is the first time I've done it, I'm just, I'm starting small um, so that I don't get overwhelmed with it. So the three subjects that we have in our looping basket um, are US presidents, world geography, and US geography. So those are sort of the three main things that I want our basket, that I want us to loop through. So when we sit down to do our basket, and the, for me, they are a one to one to one ratio, so we will literally just repeat um, that loop. 
And so what I then did was if you go to Pam's site, she has a printout for this and it allows you to sort of put in the subjects you want to include in your loop and their frequency. And then she has you a way for you to plan your loop down here. I've kind of looked at it and said, okay, presidents. What do, what do I want my kids to know about presidents? You know, what's the goal? Um, and so for me, it's awareness, awareness of who people are. Um, in case you're just coming to this video and you don't already follow, I have five kids in school this year, everywhere ranging from um, four to 11. So we're kind of all over the map. Um, so for the younger ones, especially just want awareness, understanding, you know, what the president is. And then um, if, you know, if I say something like George Washington, I, I would like for my younger kids to be able to be like, oh, that was the first president, um, things like that. My older kids, you know, I want them to really work on memorizing all of the presidents as well as something sort of interesting about them that uh, will help them to remember them. So I'll kind of go over really quickly um, so within our looping basket, which I'm gonna need a bigger basket, y'all. I'm gonna need a way bigger basket because I don't actually have everything. So the, I have stuff coming from Amazon and Usborne. So I will, I wrote them down so I will mention to you what they are and everything that I can will be linked down below if you would like to go check it out for yourself. But within the presidents, we have all the different sort of resources that I have. I have a fan decks of presidents, president flashcards, this was just from the dollar spot at Target, a little president book. Um, this time for learning presidents. This I got from our local homeschool room, but it's you know got got a spread about each president and some interesting information, and then has some kind of like pull out or something fun on each page. And then this I'm really I think it's just so fun. It's called Presidential Pets, and it's the weird, wacky, little, big, scary, strange animals that have lived in the White House. So my kids love animals, so this will be fascinating to them. Because everything is not, everything's in for presidents, but it's not for the other subjects, and I'll get there in a second. But what I need to do next is make a, and Pam talks about this, make a procedure for each um, subject. Because they're not just open and go, it's not just like a single book that's like, okay, we just wanna do this book, and you just open it and go. Um, I have multiple resources for each area, so I need to make a procedure, if you will, so that I know on the day that we do presidents, this is what we do. We do, first we do flashcard work, then we do, um, we read a page from each of the resources that I have, and then maybe we play the game. Like whatever I decide after really diving in and looking through all the materials, whatever I decide, the procedure will be, I'll have that written out um, in my homeschool planning binder, which eventually I'm gonna do a video for you guys on my binder, because. I love planning and binders. I feel like I could break out into like some kind of a show tune song or something about planners and binders. <laughs> Guys, children. I love them, I love them. They're just so loud. Okay, so that's like the president's um, section. And then next we have world geography. So for world geography, when I really sat down and looked what I wanted my kids to know, I wanted them to know uh, world map awareness, sort of what does the earth look like, um, continents, and we, I also really wanted them to learn a little bit about different cultures and like what, this is not like cultural studies, that's something totally different that we might dive into more later but just like some just tap on it a little bit you know different cultures and like what they eat um that kind of thing so for that i have the usborne geography encyclopedia um and again i will have links to all of this down below i am a rep for usborne so i love usborne books and i did that because i love usborne books and use them and i'm just trying to build up my library so if you buy a ton of books or have any interest in repping Osborne books, definitely send me an email um, down below, but you can also just shop the link if you would like to as well, which helps us build up our personal family library. Um, anyhow, so this is also the Osborne Internet Linked Encyclopedia World Geography. And so this is really cool because, because what it does is if you go through a lesson, um, then at the top corner here, it'll say Internet Links, and it'll tell you exactly where to go on the Osborne this Usborne link, and it is basically like dives further in and gives you even more information than just what's on this page. So it's sort of like, you wanna know more? Go here. So I really, really like that. So we have those two books, as well as 
this book, which we've used before, but not for a while. So it will be fresh for some of my kids and a refresher for other kids. But this is called Children Just Like Me, a unique celebration of children around the world. And it's just a really fun book, literally showing like kids all around the world. What do they wear? What do they play with? What does it look like for them to go to school? Um, all that kind of stuff, which I think is fascinating. And I love, I love learning about that stuff and I want my kids to love learning about it too. I also purchased from Usborne the um, Look Inside Our World book as well as the Children's Picture Atlas. So those I purchased from Usborne and then from Amazon and these are really cool books. I will link them down below if you have any interest. I heard about them from another homeschooler when I looked at like what she was doing with them. I was like, okay, those are cool. One is called Material World and the other one is called Hungry Planet. So definitely check those out. But so those are our resources for our world geography. Um, and once I have everything in, then I will sit down and make a procedure for world geography. Basically what we would do each time we actually sat down to do world geography. Um, and then as far as the US geography goes, um, my sort of goals for that as I've written, the goals depending on my the kid, because obviously age dependent, um, but to be able to draw the US and to know the states and capitals. Like that's what we're starting out with right now. And so I purchased, um, and I will also link this down below because I got this from Amazon, but it's the Draw the USA book and it basically just literally goes through state by state and teaches the kids how to draw the United States. And at the end they have a fully drawn picture of the United States that they did themselves and ideally would be able to repeat it and replicate it again. So we have that as one of our resources. Then I also got a book from Usborne called State Capitals, and I am still looking for a couple more resources for that. So obviously we're starting school pretty soon, but I think as I've mentioned before, we do like a staggered start with our school so we don't jump in head first with every single subject. We ease in, we go in slowly. It's super tempting to like jump in and do all the subjects, especially when we're all so excited about it all. But for burnout reasons, it's better to start slow um, and sort of integrate subjects little by little. So I've still got a little more time. I'm gonna be ordering hopefully this week, but I wanted to get this video done. So let me know if you have any other ideas too for great resources for our US geography. Let me know down in the comments. Um, I would appreciate that a lot. So that is basically what a looping basket is, how we are using it. Uh, like I said, I haven't ironed out fully our full schedule yet, so I can't tell you exactly where in the day it will go. But it will go in our day every day until we've gotten through what I want and then we'll pick new things for the looping basket. And I'm already like daydreaming about new things I wanna do and just different ways I can incorporate things. I love, love, love that it prevents you from feeling like you're falling behind because you're just picking up the next thing the next time. So I think it's gonna work really well for us, but hopefully that all makes sense. I will leave links to everything down below to Pam Barnhill's um, site where you guys can get these printables for free. Um, if you would like to use them as well, I will link to as much as I can um, the books from Amazon as well as the books from my Usborne store. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope y'all have a great week. I will see y'all back here on Thursday. Bye.